Hello and welcome to Gen AI, What Is It Good For? We are Emma Nelms and Jackie Quinn, Liaison Librarians at QUT Library. When it comes to Gen AI, there can be more questions than answers, especially about how to work effectively going forward. It's a new way of reading, a conversation with the text, but then the book summaries have factual errors. If we're all using Gen AI to write and read, why are we writing these journal articles? Don't you have to sometimes do the slow work to gain the understanding of content and writing? There are license and copyright implications. Will users care? Will publishers make us care? Is there a killer app or will it become ubiquitous with and existing tools. Gen AI is appearing in MS Office, Adobe, databases and ebook platforms. Will there be additional costs and what about equity of access? Will universities subscribe to these additional tools and what is the real return on investment? AI is everywhere for finding literature and summarizing literature. Please comment on more apps that you're using and what you think of them in the chat. So another day, another app. What do we tell our researchers to do when a new app appears? And sometimes I feel I understand more about reading about the apps than using them directly myself. So what do we advise them when we're tinkering about this stuff ourselves? One, nobody really understands what Gen AI can do yet and what data was fed into it. And the real question is, is Gen AI a collaborator or a tool? I recommend having a look at Ethan Mollick's article on the jagged technological frontier. He looks at expanding AI capabilities. AI covers an expanding but uneven and unknown set of knowledge work. And there is some task variability. Some tasks are easily done by AI, while others, though seemingly from similar, are beyond AI's current capabilities. So we need to learn how to navigate the frontier to really lead to some significant productivity benefits. The risks of AI is a Partly, it's opacity. Using AI is like a black box. We don't really know what's inside it and what it can do. And tasks outside AI capabilities can negatively impact productivity and quality. As AI's performance drops for tasks requiring deep understanding and contextual knowledge, so it actually can decrease our performance. Misusing AI for tasks beyond its capabilities can lead to inefficiencies. And AI struggles with nuanced decisions and integrating varied data sources, such as problem identification, developing a deep understanding of specific business or learner problems, and evidence-based decisions, making robust decisions requiring actual subject expertise. So the tips that Ethan Mollett comes up with is looking at ways to leverage AI's strengths, using AI for structured tasks where it excels and recognize its boundaries, especially for tasks needing deep expertise and nuanced decision making. Combine human skills with AI capabilities. Learn how to effectively test and integrate all new AI tools and focus on developing skills that AI cannot replicate. So what are the skills inside the actual frontier? AI can enhance productivity by handling more tasks faster. AI improves the quality of work, especially for below average skill levels. It excels in highly structured tasks with clear instructions and outputs, survey and feedback analysis, for example, where it can identify common themes, sentiments and patterns, content curation, gathering content from large data sets based on specific objectives, generating summaries and definitions, and statistical analysis, performing complex analysis quickly and accurately, such as text analysis or pattern recognition. I also have a recommend having a look at Cara Kennedy, who's wrote about AI literacy landscape. She's got a website and she's also had a few videos out there. And she considers inside her looking at AI literacy, some key things she looks at is knowing which tool to use and when, using AI to access information and organize data, communicate and collaborate within AI systems, and determine how and when to acknowledge their use. Use AI to personalize and adapt existing content and understand the legal and ethical issues. Understand and manage risk and liability, privacy, environmental and mental health considerations, and understand and mitigate for errors in AI-generated outputs. Hold on to your hats. That's what I'm saying. Gen AI has basically consumed most of the internet. So the question is more around how well Gen AI can use that data and identify quality rather than quantity. Its energy consumption is not good for the environment and is leading to a massive increase in carbon emissions. Equity of access and abilities is a growing issue and prompting will be the new search for many of our users. So you need to know what this is about. 
My suggestions going forward as a librarian is to tinker and play. For example, most of us have access to MS Copilot or even Meta. Support good quality information and good research because that's going to become more important than ever. Check your facts and consider Gen AI as a first step, a new tool, but not a substitute for any step in the research life cycle. And know you are good at what it's bad at. Thank you so much.